Two, one. Alright ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the After Hours Gaming League with Penguin and Rifkin. We're here today with week number six between none other than Zynga and Storm8. Two teams that we have not had the pleasure of casting just yet. Looking forward to this quite a bit. And who do we have spotting as our players, Mr. Rifkin? Well, in the top right corner of the map, playing for Storm8, it is none other than the Blue Zerg Final Bug. <laughs> it's Zynga in chat there with a scumbag. <laughs> His opponent playing for Zynga going to be none other than Preposterous, the Red Zerg. I have to say, the little the chat, the beginning of the game chat was pretty preposterous. Yeah, I'm no just worried that their games might be a little bugged. Okay, I see what you did there. Player names, you're so cute, Penguin. But no. Uh... All, all uh, self-promotion aside, as we saw there, it's DBZ. It's hard of this morning, folks. Welcome, welcome. How do you think this now, match... Now, we've had some... Sorry, uh, go ahead. I was going to say, how do you think this match is going to go? We've seen quite a few <laughs> mirror matchups in the AHGL so far. Yeah, uh, the first couple of weeks, we saw a lot of people sending out Terrans, a lot of Terran victories. But over the last couple of weeks, it does look like these teams have finally learned how to play against Terran race. Uh, and we're going to be seeing two players that are not Terran in our first game, as you so graciously pointed out before. And this is going to be a very interesting game, I think, because it's ZVZ, as you mentioned, and ZVZ in HOTS goes one of two ways. It goes either Super Mega All-In mode, and that's less likely on this map, just because it's a very defendable map. But the other thing that can happen quite a bit is Mutaling versus Mutaling, which is always something that I really like uh, watching, because it's, it's just really, really dynamic and comes down to a lot of micro and such. And, well, on this map, that's what I would probably expect to be the most likely course of action for him. I gotta say here as well, this is probably the first time in about 100 ZBZs where both players have chosen to go for either spawning pool or layer first. Like, so often you see one go spawning pool 15, the other goes hatchery 15, and it's like, we discuss the mechanics and the pros and cons of both, but the reality is, it's so inconsequential to the actual outcome of the game. Yeah, I think the best way, um, I can't remember who it was who described it like this, but it's pretty much... Both players taking a, uh, they want to go to the same place, they want to end up at the same place, but they're just taking slightly different routes to get there. But in this case, they're taking exactly the same route, down to, actually, the only difference right now is that uh, Two Preposterous wants to go scouting a little earlier, getting a couple things out. Earlier gas as well, not really going to be that consequential, most likely. Well, it's funny, on, on Heart of the Swarm, I mean, like, there's a, I've seen from the pro streams to, like, my actual experiences on ladder, there's a lot of sort of zergling, not even bailing, but just zergling all-ins that happen. Yeah, zergling pressure is something that is becoming increasingly popular just because uh, you have the players who do try to get very, very fast lair, very, very fast mutalisks out because a lot of the games do end up in Ling Muta versus Ling Muta. So if you can catch one of, an, uh, one of the guys who's just very, very greedy and punish him for that, it can be very, very deadly. It does look like both players are just going to be drawing up for now, though. Preposterous is going to... Confirm the existence of an expansion. Not even gonna run up into the main though. <laughs> an expansion, preposterous. <laughs> he actually already knew it was there for the Overlord as well, so the Lings didn't really do much of anything. Yeah, I mean, like personally, as a Terran player, I'll never understand like how. I don't know. You get the Overlord Highway in the middle of the map. It's kind of a map where it's like, well, it's Zerg versus Zerg. We might as well just turn the fog of war off. I mean, like really. <laughs> That's true. I mean, especially on a map like this, there's so many. Uh, attack paths that can be used to sort of baffle your opponent in the other matchups. But in ZBZ, it's like, oh, okay, there's, a, there's an attack path there. I guess I'll just put an Overlord there. And Jesus Christ, Drifkin, we have these guys, it's 5 minutes 30, and these guys are still playing essentially down to the letter the exactly the same way. We've yeah, got Banley Nest on the way up. Yeah, I mean, Banley <laughs> Nest on the way up, Spines on the way up. There's only a little bit of a, I think there's a tiny advantage for uh, Final Bug in the drone count right now. Uh, he is about to, yeah, there we go, he takes a slight advantage there, 25 to 26, just cutting the initial set of lings that Preposterous made. And even four lings coming out for both players now, they're just both playing so evenly. This is actually really cool, We I kind of get caught off guard talking about this, because as I start talking about it, that's when the deviations happen. Yeah, 14 oh. lings, so I'm just going to stop right there. <laughs> I, I can never talk about the beauty of a mere matchup without someone ruining it. Preposterous, damn you. <laughs> As you did say, though, we have 10 more links on the way. They are going to be popping right now, and looks like he does want to put on quite a bit of aggression here. Oh, uh, his only failing us is complete as well. There is not only a spine color, but a nice wall starting up here for our Storm 8 player. And I mean, Ooh. a couple Bane links, a nice positioning on these queens. He should be able to handle this very easily. 
he should, but he is getting 10 drones at the moment, which could just put a bit of a wrench in this whole plan. Uh, but here but the yeah, there, there we go, full wall off gun. Uh, this is of course going to mean, if he lets this wall finish, this is going to allow Preposterous to take a third and just do whatever he wants, just get tons and tons of drones. Um, because of course he knows his opponent will not be able to move out, but he is opting for a, an earlier lair himself. Yeah, for anyone who might be one of the more casual StarCraft players, fear not, there are no map hacks at play here. There are just overlords all over the map, and our StarMate player did see all those Zerglings coming across the field. Yeah, now, this ooh. is actually a really big investment from him, especially since he's actually getting the 12 lings behind this. This would have been really nice for him if he just droned up behind this, but he saw, he's going to be behind in drones now. With his overlord, too, he saw the full wall off. I'm really interested in why he continued. I mean, like, we have the Baylings come out. Where are they? Okay, they're going back home, but... Yeah, I mean, he, yeah, but actually, Postress is pretty far ahead at this point. He's up by six workers because Final Bug did just make a ton of links instead of drones. And he also invested quite a bit in these additional Evo Chambers just to wall off and the double spine crawler. So he's actually behind in his lair timing. He's behind in the third base timing as Preposterous is able to throw his down and Final Bug isn't going to be able to do anything about that. And Preposterous is even ahead in the Spire timing. So Final Bug falling a little bit behind here, but we'll see if he can utilize these Evo Chambers to get maybe he can, of course, get double upgrades if he so desires from these Evo Chambers, maybe taking advantage there. It's really hard to get around Mutalisks, though. I mean, when you're that far behind, I mean, even when you're on even Spire timing, you know, even just having that one extra Mutalisk can change the game. Our Red Zerg player is going to have Mutalisks out so much faster, so much earlier, and have more out than uh, Final Bug. Yeah, the biggest thing right now is going to be he is getting a third hatchery himself, so his larva production is going to be on par, but this is not a third base, which means that he's going to be down two gas geysers to his opponent. And he's going to be behind almost a minute in the upgrades because the Spire 4 uh, Preposterous is about 50 seconds ahead. And he even scouts his opponent. He sees the Spire of Final Bug. Has Final Bug seen his opponent yet? No, he has not scouted his opponent at all. Well, it's ZVZ and Heart of the Storm, though. It's fairly safe to assume Mutalisks will be out. They're kind of the new meta game. <laughs> no matter what the matchup is, it's like, oh, it's eight minutes in the game. Let's get a Spire. <laughs> well, I mean, it doesn't really work versus Terran that much right now, but... I do see your point in the other two matchups, and yeah, there we go, six links on the way. Uh, six mutas on the way, I'm sorry. Yeah, and the thing is, like, Preposterous, he's got a nice amount of banelings that were never wasted on that wall. He's got a ton of zerglings at home. Even if he didn't have the mutalisks, the current zerglings on the field for Storm 8, or sorry, Final Bug, they're just not that big of a threat. We are finally going to be seeing Final Bug taking his own third, even going straight for the double gas as well. I do like this, just so they will be done when he's able to, uh, when he's able to move Units on over, drones on over, and we do see a couple of links moving on in to try to deny this, but there are a lot of links on the field for Final Bug, and this should not be able to deny this. No, he should absolutely be chased off, if not kill the Zerglings. Meanwhile, although we do have Mutalists starting to clean up Overlords around the map, this is going to really shut down our blue Zerg on his map vision. Look at this. Spy. Pop. 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 Actually, one of the, I pointed out earlier, one of the biggest advantages that Preposterous is going to have is the upgrade advantage, but he actually t took about 30 seconds to actually start his, so he's only about 20 seconds ahead in upgrades right now, so Final Bug's going to be a bit happy about that. Yeah, and somehow Final Bug actually has the Mutalisk lead right now, too. 7 to 6. Mm. No, I, I don't think that's going to last long, though. He is supply blocked pretty hardcore at the moment. But, uh, well, yeah, he's sleep off the well. I actually really like that. Mm -hmm. That's 50 gas for free right there, and Foster is still in quite a nice supply lead. He is up by 20 workers at this point. And now he's at the point where he doesn't need any more drones. He can just make mutas, links, mutas, links, mutas, and links. Well, the thing too, despite the gas lost from that, it suddenly makes his own zerglings more viable. He doesn't have to worry about the threat of those banelings. It's true. Now, uh, there are no Although spawn the other followers. Thing to note, sorry, um, we do see a bit of a mutalist poke in the natural here. But the other thing to notice is that Final Bug did get plus one for his speedlings, which means they will not die to one baneling. So that's one of the things that we do have to make that we do have to keep in mind. And his links are obviously going to tank quite a bit more. But there is a nice little engagement of mutalisks in the middle of the map. Preposterous does pull on back before the links get there. Yeah, both players choose to disengage. I mean, it's kind of a risky fight. With such low mutalist numbers, you can't really ensure your victory there. Yeah, and especially Preposterous did very nicely to pull on back there. The the links for Final Bug probably would have been enough to turn the tide of the battle in his favor. Of course, links do tank half of the damage from the mutalists with the glaive bounce. So what I wanted to point out, though, though, is, you know, we've had recent changes in Heart of the Swarm to make spore crawlers more efficient and a lot more deadly versus mutalisks, and I'm quite shocked uh, that we didn't have any here from Final Bug, but, you know, he was very quick to put down spine crawlers early on. Here we go, a couple of <laughs> a couple of banelings actually moving into the natural mineral line, but there's nothing there, the third mineral line, rather. Here come the links for both players. Looks like Final Bug going to come out uh, ahead in the ground fight. Mutalisks are going to be chased on out, though. Uh, we do have pretty even middle list numbers at this point. 60 Final Bug 2 with the 14 of Preposterous. And Final Bug's actually going to push him back. 
all the way to his base. Yeah, I mean, that was a really solid defense. He got some good Baneling hits off, and the Zergling numbers are just so numerous. But the Baneling's connecting to all of them. They don't care. They go right to the mineral line, going straight for the heart of those queens. We do have a nice little engagement on the Mutas, though. More Mutas for final bug means he does come, a, uh, come out ahead there. Get some really, really nice trading there. He will lose one Mutas to a Spore Crawler, but overall, Final Bug did a very good job to not only hold his own third, but push his opponent back and definitely taking advantage of the workers lost. The big problem for him now is his fourth base that's established for Preposterous. Yeah, and he is mining from it too. We did see the Spore Crawler coming to a little bit of effect there. As you said, one of the Mutas was picked off, and they now have double damage versus Biological. And oh, we got a nice engage here in the middle of the map. Unfortunately, a lot of these Zerglings underneath are going to soak these Glaives, Penguin. We'll have to see how this Mutalist battle. It battles. looks like the Mutas are just too much, though, and he does force them away. Uh, pretty even trade there overall. As you said, the, the Mutas did uh, have the help of the Lings tanking there for them, but he does force him back. Final Bug's no longer posturing outside his fourth. Actually, um, I'm wrong about that. He's moving out with quite a few Lings to try to take out that fourth. Yeah, Not I mean, sure how successful this is going to be. I like the fact that these guys have continued with the Ling production, though. They know their opponents have Mutalists, and while Mutalists, yeah, they hit Zerglings. There's so many of them that they can't really clean them up very fast, is the problem. Look True. at this. Oh, man, he oh. can't pick off some more drones. Getting moving right into, into the, the third. Meanwhile, here. there's Ling's moving into the third, third, third of Final Bug as well, and there's really not that many drones there. He will pick off the Queen, and the gas mining is essentially nullified there. It looks like he may even get the hat. is also under attack. Event. There's so much going on the map right now. Three different locations being hit by a lot of units. Preposterous does clean his up, but Final Buck has nothing at home. He's going to lose his third base location. And that is actually going to be absolutely horrendous for him. He is now only at half the gas income of his opponent. The Mutalists are going to engage without Link support in the middle of the map, and Preposterous has the better numbers by the looks of it. Yeah, the reinforcements are trying to come in, but I mean, these Glaives, it comes down to the random Glaive bounces. Will they help focus fire? Or will they? But it looks like it's pretty even trading right now. We see 10 Mutalists to 8. This is not too bad of a trade in the middle of the map, but both players kind of losing a lot. I see Final Bug coming out a little bit further behind after losing at their base, though. Absolutely. I mean, the biggest thing now is going to be the gas income. He didn't really lose that many drones there because he was only really mining gas there. But losing the hatchery means that Preposterous now has eight geysers to the two of his opponent. And these links in the middle of the map, that's another inefficient trade for him. The Mutalist is helping out for Preposterous. And uh, this is now, I mean, at this point, Final Bug cannot afford any of these bad trades. He's coming in with more links to try to pick up the uh, fourth, but the spine crawlers are going to be enough to defend. It doesn't kill so, anything. Really nice transfuses keep that other spine alive there, too. So, I mean, this base did not really suffer any losses at all. And, okay, GG coming out of Final Bug.